Welcome, Euro Kids families. We are here again to worship our Lord. Are you ready for that? Before we start, parents, I'd like to know if you can help your little ones to get or get ready a paper or plastic plate in five blocks, five ABC blocks. If you don't have the ABC blocks, it's fine. We, go, we will go ahead and do a game in just a little bit. Are you ready to worship? I am ready to worship. I just want to remind you what is worship. Worship is a way to connect with God. Worship is when you express your feelings through the song and the music. So I really want you to think about what we're going to be singing and not just do the motions, but just know that by you saying something to God, you connect that way. I'm gonna show you the step for at the top of my lung. So we're gonna be moving about uh, right, left, right, left, about eight to 10 times. Also, when it says at the top of my lungs, I will praise you. God, you're my everything. You're the reason why I lift my voice at the top of my lungs. And then when it says, Freestyle, remember what we do? We start dancing and just showing mom and dad your really good moves. So I hope you can go ahead and join me. You spoke one word and the dark became light. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. You spoke my name and my heart came to life. I believe it, yeah. I wanna sing about it. I wanna scream and shout it. I'm gonna sing it right now. At the top of my lungs, I sing. With all of my heart, I will praise you. God, you are everything. You're the reason that I lift my voice. At the top of my lungs, I sing. With all of my heart, I will praise you. God, Hey, little 
your friends at home, you did great worshiping God. I did have fun. Did you have fun? Right now, we are going to get ready for our game. So if you have your plate, we're going to go ahead and use it right now. Basically, it's as simple game as this. You're going to put the plate on your head, and the idea is that you have to put the ABC blocks on, in order on a column up. You think it's easy? It's not that easy. Let me see if I can do it. You think Miss Raquel can do it? Mm, I don't know. I tried yesterday and it didn't happen, but let's see this time. So here we go. So you have 30 seconds to complete this challenge. Let's see who can do it. And I want to see pictures and maybe videos if your parents want to go ahead and comment on it to show me what you're doing. So on your marks, get set and go. So A. B, are you doing it at home? No bad right now, huh? O, A, B, G, I told you. A, B, C, maybe? D, and, can I do it? Can Miss Raquel do it? E. Let me know if you were able to do it at home. Good job. Great try. My friend Jake is going to be telling us a little something about humility. Take it, Jake. Hey, this is Jacob. Or, you know, just Jake. Is everyone okay? There was like an earthquake or something in my room. I didn't feel it when I was outside my room. But then when I came in the room, everything was turned upside down. My table, my bed, also known as my couch, my Ferrari, my sculpture. That's better. I don't know how this could have, wait a second. Is there such a thing as room quake? <laughs> yeah, that must be it. Anyway. I'm supposed to talk to you today about something called humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. So that means like doing stuff for others, I guess. Like my friend Chris, he's really good at humility. I mean, he humiliates me like all the time. Am I saying that right? Humiliate, humiliate, humiliate. He shows humility to me He's super busy, but he always takes the time to put me first by playing his April Fool's surprises on me. Like the time he put my keys in Jell-O. Or the time he made me a tray of brownies. <sighs> brownies. And who can forget the old and screw the top off the salt surprise? <laughs> Chris is a funny guy. Hey, you know what I think? And this is just between you and me. Chris is the one who turned all my stuff upside down. It wasn't a room quake after all. This must have taken a really long time. I mean, he turned all my stuff upside down. I do need to call my mom. This must have taken a lot of work. I'm not sure that it's fair that Chris keeps playing all these April Fool's month surprises on me and I haven't even got him once. I don't deserve this. What I deserve is to get him back. <laughs> Was that my toaster? The story today is about Jesus when he prayed in the garden while his friends couldn't even stay awake to keep watch. Jesus didn't deserve that. I wonder what he did about it. Stay tuned. I'm gonna come up with a way to turn the tables on Chris. Chris is gonna notice when he goes in his room, the tables aren't the way he remembered. I'm gonna get the revenge I deserve. I'm gonna get the revenge I deserve, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, okay. Dear families, we are in a new month, April, and we are learning a new life app. What is a life app? A life app is something that God does in us to change the world around us. Jake mentioned that our life app is humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. The Bible story comes from Matthew 26, 36 to 56, the way Jesus prays in Gethsemane. 
This story will teach you a valuable lesson about humility. And we can talk more when we come back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 56. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been plotting to silence Jesus. He called us pretenders, snakes. On the Sunday before Passover, Jesus entered Jerusalem to great cheers from the crowds. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But even as the crowd swarmed in to see what Jesus would do and say, one of Jesus' closest followers, Judas, went to the religious leaders with a very sneaky plan. What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? How about a cool 30 pieces of silver? Jesus knew these plans, but he also knew that his mission was to face those who hated him and let them take him without defending himself. He prepared his closest friends for this during a Passover meal, and then afterwards led them out of the city toward the Mount of Olives. Judas had already left them. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The air cooled as the evening darkened. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter, the most outspoken of Jesus' friends, quickened his step and tightened his hand on the sword he was carrying. All the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. What I'm about to tell you is true. It will happen tonight. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. I may have to die with you, but I will never say I don't know you. Me too. Same. <sighs> By the time Jesus and his friends reached the Garden of Gethsemane, they were exhausted. Sit here while I go over there and pray. As the other disciples settled in on the cold, rough ground, Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him to a grove of ancient olive trees. The weight of what was coming pressed down on him. My soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. We're here for you. We got this. Prayers. The three friends found seats among the knotted tree roots, and Jesus went on a little further. Then suddenly, he fell down on the ground, face first into the dirt. Words poured out from deep inside. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But let what you want be done, not what I want. After a short time, Jesus returned to his friends. They had all fallen into restless sleep. Jesus touched Peter's arm. What? Huh? Just, uh, we're just, uh, we're just praying. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We'll stay awake this time. Got you covered. Again, Jesus threw himself down to pray. His pain was so deep, blood and sweat beaded on his forehead. My father... Is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want be done. Jesus returned to his friends once more to find them still sleeping. The agony in his spirit forced Jesus to lay his heart out to God once more. He prayed the desperate words again, begging God to take away what was coming. And at the same time, revealing his complete trust in God's plan. Let what you want be done, not what I want. At last, Jesus knew the time had come. He returned to find Peter, James, and John buried deep in sleep. Beyond them, his other followers slept too. Are you still sleeping and resting? The disciples struggled through a fog of sleep, blinking and yawning. Below them, torchlight showed an angry mob climbing up the hill. 
the men were waving swords and clubs, shouting as they came. Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. Jesus' friends staggered to their feet, and Peter clutched his sword. As the mob marched closer, they could see the man in front of the mob. It was their friend Judas. Judas? What are you doing? The mob had been sent by the Jewish religious leaders. Judas had already explained to them that he would greet Jesus with a kiss, so they would know exactly which man to arrest. Greetings, teacher. Judas ignored the other disciples and went directly to Jesus, kissing him on the cheek in greeting. Jesus drew back and looked Judas directly in the face. Friend, do what you came to do. The mob surged forward as the disciples just stood there, frozen and confused. As men grabbed Jesus, Peter suddenly sprang to life, awkwardly drawing his sword. Should we use our swords? Peter didn't wait for an answer, but he struck out wildly. His blade sliced right through the ear of the high priest's servant. Oh! Stop this! Jesus touched the servant's ear. Immediately, he was healed. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Jesus turned back to the mob and the men who held him. They hovered there, uncertain, in the flickering light of their torches. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courtyard teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that the words of the prophets would come true. No one could respond to Jesus. Instead, they arrested him and led him away. And his friends who said they'd be with him through anything ran away. Jesus made the choice that would bring life to everyone, but that would cost him everything. We are going to be learning a memory verse this month, a new one. And it says, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do anything because you are proud. Instead, be humble and value others more than yourself. And this is from Philippians 2, 3, and IRV. Our basic truth for this week is I should treat others the way I want to be treated. Can you talk to somebody at home and see the way you want to be treated and how you want to treat others? I want to give you a few seconds for you to go ahead and talk to someone. Somebody's gonna get a mustard-filled donut later, and I'm finally gonna get what I deserve. <laughs> hey, did you know that Jesus didn't deserve all that stuff that happened to him? Like when his friends ditched him when he needed them, and when those people arrested Jesus even though he never did anything he wasn't supposed to? And then, when he was put on that cross, I mean, what? Jesus could like, calm a storm with his hand and bring dead people back to life. Why do you let all that bad stuff happen to him? Turns out, it was all a part of the plan. When God created the world a whole bunch of years ago, he knew people were gonna need help if they were gonna have a relationship with him. So he told people he was sending someone who would have to pay for all the stuff they did wrong. And that someone was Jesus. But it's not like Jesus wanted to go through all that bad stuff. In the garden, he was like, God, any chance there's a different way to save the world and stuff? But then Jesus was like, it's not about what I want, God, because what you want is better. So what did Jesus do to his friends in the garden who let him down? He put them first. And what did Jesus do to those people who arrested him for no reason? He put them first. And what did Jesus do for you, me, and the whole world? He put us first. It's kind of an 
upside down way of doing things. Putting somebody else first for no reason when they don't earn it or when they may not even deserve it. I bet we can put people first like Jesus did. You know, we could let someone else pick what restaurant to go to or what video game to play. We could give up our place in line sometimes. Or when someone surprises us by turning our room upside down, we could choose to not get even. So here's the one thing I learned today. Put others first. It's not about what we deserve. It's not about what we want. What God wants is better. So April Fool's month or not, I'm gonna put people first. And Chris, if you're watching, keep the surprises coming, but I won't be taking my revenge. I'll just be sitting here getting what I truly deserve. A delicious mustard filled donut. Ah, that's some good stuff right there. That's some good mustard. See you next time. Our key question, how do you put others first? Remember, putting others first is more important. Jesus demonstrated that over and over, and we hope that we can do the same thing. Our bottom line for this month is put others first. Can you say it to somebody next to you? Put others first. Don't forget to support Children's Ministry by giving at erockchurch.com slash give. I have announcements to give you. I'm preparing a great Easter option for you. It will look a little different than usual, but it will still be great. It will be a drive through Easter basket pickup that you can take home and do activities and games with your family on Easter Sunday. The Easter drive through will happen on Saturday, April 11, from 1 to 3 p.m. Pack the whole family in the car if you want to, um, and you can come and say hi and wave to, wave to me. Parents, if you are looking for resources to talk to your kids about anxiety, we got you covered. I will be posting a link through the chat where you can find good information on what subjects to talk to them. Also, we have the Parent Q app. It's a great resource where you can also find content on your kids and how they behave. Beautiful families, it is time to say goodbye until next week, but I wanted to remind you that humility is putting others first by giving up uh, what, what you think you deserve. Treat others the way you want to be treated. I really hope you exercise that this week. We love you, we miss you, we pray for you, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.